Hey, what's going on guys? Arix here, and today I want to talk some more about Lost Ark. Yes, I'm back again. You guys know it, right? This is my favourite game that is still not out yet. It is the game that I'm still hoping eventually makes its way to the West, and I do feel like we're getting ever closer. There is, of course, now the Russian closed beta, which even has an English language patch, unofficial of course, but it's still technically speaking possible to play in English, so I do feel like we're slowly getting ever closer to a potential eventual Western release. Either that or I'm just incredibly optimistic. Either way, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to continue talking about this game until somebody notices and then eventually they bring it to the West. Alright, that's like my quest. Anyway, that aside, today I want to talk about classes because in the past I've shown you guys some of the classes in Lost Ark and you guys really enjoyed the video. Since then there have of course been a few new additional classes and this week they even dropped a brand new class showcase. There is an additional class that falls into the warrior category which now has four effectively subclasses and that new class is the Holy Knight who is basically your paladin. They announced this the other week but they actually dropped the class preview, the nice little sort of like 30 second gameplay montage that always shows just how insanely cool the class can be. So uh, I figured there have been enough changes, enough kind of additions since then to warrant putting it all together into one big all classes video. So if you guys of course have been following Lost Ark for quite some time then all the new stuff will be at the front of this video. If you guys are like hey I never heard of this game before what is this then every single thing in this video you're gonna want to watch. This is currently all the classes that are available in Lost Ark. The very first one is of course the aforementioned brand new Holy Knight, the new addition to the warrior class and this is your support type class. They use a sword and the power of faith you can use Holy Divine skills to buff and support your allies, plus you also have the Sword of Punishment, which then allows you to dish out some devastating damage in battle. You have a couple of identity skills, Divine Executioner and Divine Aura, and during battle, you use your Faith Gauges to strengthen the sword or increase your party's combat abilities. If you use the God's Executioner skill, you can then concentrate the Power of Faith into your sword to increase your attack range and damage. Meanwhile, if you use the Aura of Divinity, an identity skill, you can then spread an aura around you and the combat abilities of party members will then be increased. Additionally, you also have the ultimate, which just looks absolutely insane. And in this one, it's called Alisanos Judgment. It holds the power of Alisanos, an ancient crusader. And you basically just do this insanely crazy powerful... I basically want to call it a paladin spirit bomb. You go up in the sky, you have your wings, you smash down on the ground and you destroy everything in your way. It looks very, very cool, and honestly, this is a nice addition to the warrior class. Having that support angle, you now have some really strong damage dealing ones, plus you have the ability to kind of jump and juggle between both. Moving on from there, we then have the assassins. Now, within this class, you have the demonic, and the Blade Assassins, they're all kind of two different sort of subclasses, so to speak. Under the Demonic category, this is the Assassin that uses Demonic Blades to cleave through groups of enemies. It looks incredibly cool in motion, like Lost Ark is just the stylish game, right? It makes anything look really cool, so naturally take something like an Assassin, a fast attacking character, and you know full well it's going to look damn awesome in this game. Of course, on top of that, it can also use the demonic energy to group up enemies and devastate them with large AOE explosions and attacks. Your attacks then fill up a resource bar at the bottom of the screen, and once that's full, you can then activate your demon form, which then empowers your attacks and gives you brand new ones that allow you to dish out even more AOE damage. Meanwhile, on the flip side, you then have the Blade Assassin, who is much more blade focused. The previous one is much more demonic focused. This one Almost kind of reminds me of like a DMC style class because it switched between daggers and a longsword making this sort of a hyper aggressive, maybe slightly more single target focus class with lots of fast hitting attacks while in the dagger stance. Meanwhile when you swap to the sword stance you have more powerful attacks and a little bit more range. When you attack enemies with this one you then fill up three orbs at the bottom of your screen and once filled you can then use that to buff your attack damage, your attack speed and your movement speed or all three can be used at once to do a super powerful blade attack. So if you kind of want to be the more sort of blade focused assassin then you've got this one. Meanwhile, you want to go more kind of mix of blades and demons, then you've obviously got your demonic. Switching over from there to the fighter classes, we then of course have the newest addition, which is the Lance Master. This of course is, as the name suggests, a class that wields a massive lance. And the way this one works is it all revolves around this sort of aggressive stance switching playstyle in order to effectively maximize your uptime on your buffs. Basically attacking in one stance, will then fill up three wells in the center of the screen and once that's filled you then switch to the other stance and you then gain the buff that increased your stats such as damage and attack speed you then replenish that meter and you switch back so as you can see the idea is or the objective basically becomes to 
Try and maintain 100% uptime on these where possible by filling those wells, switching stance, filling again. So it really is one of those sort of, you know, high paced, fast paced, aggressive classes that really does reward getting stuck in and maximizing that damage. It also has good mobility, large sweeping AOE attacks that can both damage and CC groups of enemies, as well as obviously some, you know, longer range skills. So it basically ends up being a pretty good all rounded jack of all trades class. Now, while we're on the topic of fighters, we might as well group that with the other three that are also within this section, the Battlemaster, the Infighter, and the Soulmaster. The Battlemaster is, of course, your agile fighter that uses gauntlets to pound through groups of enemies, keeping them stunlocked in the process. You're able to then utilize the elements to empower their attacks and dish out small pockets of AoE that then group up enemies and kind of dish out large bursts of damage. <laughs> Meanwhile, the infighter is slightly slower, harder hitting. It's kind of like your sort of powerhouse version. This is again, is designed to sort of carve through groups of enemies with ease using heavier charged up punches. It's capable of calling upon the twin dragon in order to overwhelm the enemies. So this is much more sort of like your brute force, your heavyweight fighter. If you really want to sit there and dish out massive damage and of course punch things in the process, then uh, this might be the one for you. Meanwhile, the other one is the Soul Master, and this instead utilizes energy-based attacks that can hit at sort of medium to short ranges while maintaining a decent amount of mobility. They can also harness the energy in order to use higher ranged AOE attacks, and an example of that being something that is effectively a Spirit Bomb. So, to kind of summarize that, within the fighter, you have a Lance Master, all about aggressive start switching. You have the Battle Master, your sort of agile, fast-paced, melee-focused fighter. You have the Infighter, the heavier brawler, more so like your heavyweight boxer. And you then have the Soul Master, who's more so about fighting with an energy pool, and then of course uses that to pull off some uh, Dragon Ball Z style attacks. Then if we turn our attention back to the Warriors, this is kind of my favorite section. Admittedly, I probably should have grouped these first because the Holy Knight belongs here, but I wanted to talk about some of the new stuff. So we're back at the Warriors. Of course, within this, you have the Berserker, the Destroyer, and the Warlord. The Berserker is a heavily armored, great sword wielding powerhouse that basically trades speed and mobility for large sweeping attacks that deal massive, massive damage. You're also capable of entering into like a frenzied state that empowers you even further. So this is, I mean, if you guys are Monster Hunter fans, this is your greatsword user, only it's a lot more kind of agile than it would be if you used it in Monster Hunter. If you want to do a lot of damage, you want to wield a huge, massive sword, then uh, Berserker is your choice. However, however, step aside, the best one, my favorite class, the Destroyer. He wields a large hammer that smashes enemies, smashes everything in his way, you knock them off their feet, you group them up, you CC them, and you can then dish out huge AoE damage. It specializes in dealing break bar damage to bosses, which then leaves them stunned and vulnerable to DPS. You can also create large AoE effects that debuff enemies, making them more susceptible to damage. So effectively, you have some of the benefit of, say, like a Berserker, where you have insane power potential and lots of things like that. But you also have some slightly wider AoE attacks that can really group up and CC enemies for some massive damage potential. This is the one that I played through when I was playing in the Korean beta, and honestly, I had had a ton of fun with this. It is without question my favorite class. If you see any of the gameplay we uploaded back when we played it, I believe that was last year or maybe the year before, then uh, you'll see a lot of destroyer stuff. Of course, the other option is the Warlord. This is basically for the Monster Hunter players out there, your gun lance user, heavily armored, you utilize a shield and a, I mean, it's basically a gun lance, all right? Let's not beat around the bush. It is a gun lance. You shoot it, it's a lance, and you can use this to CC mobs and bosses. It's an incredibly tanky class that has complete control over the battlefield, has the ability to shield not only yourself, but also allies within an area to kind of protect them from damage. So basically, you then look at the warrior setup and you have, say, the Holy Knight and the Warlord being more so the uh, protective defensive one, and you then have the Berserker and the Destroyer being the uh, all-out tanky, damaging heavy hitters. After that, for the uh, magicians out there, we have the magical classes. Under the magician category, you have the arcana, the summoner, and the bard. Arcana is, of course, your mobile maze that utilizes card magic to dish out fast hitting attacks, as well as using a deck system that basically empowers their abilities in interesting ways. The deck will, of course, rotate, so there's a degree of randomness to this, but it's actually a rather interesting class with some pretty sweet abilities. <laughs> 
you then have the summoner, pretty much says it in the name, a mage that utilizes familiars and summons to deal AoE elemental damage from afar. It has access to several large summons that each have different effects, ranging from, say, the large foot of a giant creature that stomps down and crushes enemies in a large area, to, say, a large set of animated armor that aids and protects you. So for those of you guys that kind of like to fight with companions, this might be one for you. Meanwhile, you then have the Bard, one of the few support characters here. You have the support mage that allows you to empower allies and debuff enemies, while also having a great deal of CC on the battlefield, so it's good for control, especially in dungeons and large groups. It's able to rapidly heal allies with large AoE moves, and just in general, one of those people that if they tend to join your team, Vesmore used to kind of play Bard in our setup, it's always a very welcome addition because everybody loves having a support person in your team. Finally, you then have the Gunners, you have the Hawkeye, the Devil Hunter, and the Blaster. The Devil Hunter is kind of like your, again, sort of DMC style. I made that reference beforehand with, say, the switching between daggers and blades. And this is kind of a similar sort of thing. This one switches between DMC style dual pistols. And this is basically sort of, you know, good at kiting enemies and bosses and sort of firing fast, chipping away at their health at a slightly slower rate. It's kind of like lower damage, but fast attacks. Meanwhile, you then have the AoE focused shotgun play style that is amazing at burning through small groups of enemies. And you also have a long ranged high damage sniper rifle that lets you deal damage from afar. So really for this class, especially given that you're wielding guns, you have kind of a setup for anything that you face. You then have the Blaster, who uses a large gun platform that's capable of minigun fire in order to deal sustained damage, a spread shot that keeps enemies at bay with heavy knockback, and you have a flamethrower to deal massive damage to packs of enemies, as well as several missiles, grenade pods, and all that other stuff you can use to dish out AoE damage. This is basically like your war machine, your Iron Man, your like big military platform. You're kind of like a walking tank. You also have your identity skill that transforms your gun into a mounted turret that fires a barrage of explosive shells. So uh, yeah, this is this is like your weapons master, so to speak. <laughs> And then finally, of course, you have Hawkeye, who is, I mean, it's kind of like Hawkeye in the Marvel Universe, right? He has a bow. Like, what is not to like? In a game like this, there's ultra stylish, being able to flip through the sky, rain down arrows on your enemies, pick them up from afar, do some good damage, just in general, be pretty agile for a ranged class. So you have this kind of good balance between Devil Hunter, who's like a jack of all trades, Hawkeye, who is, of course, you know, good speed and agility, and the Blaster, who is just like a heavy damaged artillery machine. So. If you guys are new to Lost Ark, you can see there's a lot of classes, they all look very cool, and you can now begin to understand why I'm very, very excited for this game. Either way, that's it for the time being. I just thought it'd be fun to kind of do an updated video because, you know, now they've been adding more classes, adding more subclasses, lots of stuff like that. There's uh, quite a lot more since the last time we spoke about it, so uh, there's your updates. Stay tuned, as when we find out more about Lost Ark, as and when I get a chance to go hands on with it again, I will be keeping you guys up to date. And in the meantime, if you guys happen to tweet about it, make sure you use hashtag Lost Ark for the West because uh, we want to get that moving, all right? Anyway, that's it for the time being. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Peace out. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. Remember to hit that subscribe button and also click on the little bell icon to turn on notifications so you don't miss my next upload. Also, don't forget, you can check out 269 and Paradise Central streaming over on Twitch six days a week. You can find a link to the multi-stream in the description box down below. Be sure to drop by and get involved. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.